Hi, I'm Irene and welcome to the Loan Officer Team Training Podcast. Today, I have a really, really special guest, Tammy Schneider, who we've known each other for 13 years, something like that. And uh, I met her through going to a Mortgage Marketing Animal event back in 2000, I don't know, a long time ago, about 13, 14 (laughs) years ago. And yeah, let's not it, talk about dates. <laughs> yeah, let's not, let's not give our age away, right? But it was such an amazing event that I had to work through a lot of fear to get there. And because I wasn't used to flying across the country, I'm in Arizona, she was in Florida. It was a uh, mortgage marketing animal event. And boy, was I happy after I got to meet her because she is an amazing woman, just a, okay. has become a great friend and have learned so much from her. And we're going to talk today about some of the things that I've learned from her that I really want the listeners to know, habits that she has and things like that. So Tammy, thank you for coming on and welcome Thanks to the podcast. for having me. Today. I love doing podcasts. So anytime someone asks me, I'm going to be more than happy to do it. I just love sharing what I know and I love learning too. So I love listening to podcasts as well. Me too. I sure do. So tell us how you got started with the mortgage marketing animals. Well, Carl and I have known each other for a really, really, really long time. And I owned uh, my own business. I had a financial planning business with my uh, my first husband. And then I owned a small little restaurant and just always kind of like business minded, et cetera. And so He was getting ready to start something and I was getting ready to start something new. I was going to go into the insurance industry. I don't know if you know that. Uh, I didn't know that. I was going to go into the insurance industry and he called me and he said, I have an idea. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I have this great idea and I'd love if you would join me. You've always been a great business person. You're always hosting parties. So you know how to interact with people really well. And you're just good with, you know, all those kind of things. And And I think we would be like peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and chocolate, you know, just a match made in heaven with our skills. So we started mortgage marketing animals back in 2008. And here we are all these years later, it's 14 years now. And we met you very early on in the game. Just love, love, love what I do. One of my specialties with our company is the hiring piece and making sure that you know what you've got. And so that's why I'm excited to be able to share with your listeners. What a great story. You know, when you think about it, you could have gone one way, he could have gone another way, but because you came together, my life has been changed. Thousands of lives have been changed because of the decisions. One decision can make a big difference. It does. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. So tell us what you, I know you love everything that you do with the, the mortgage marketing animals. And then we started the Freedom Club together in 2012. Yeah. And that has been amazing. Tell us about the Freedom Club a little bit. So the Freedom Club is a coaching program, a mentoring program for, specifically made for the mortgage industry. And it is helping people figure out how to run a very successful business. So we're really not a training company that trains you how to actually write a loan. So we're not going to teach you how to do DTIs or read tax returns or anything like that. Our specialty is helping to encourage you, mentor you, give you scripts and the tools that you need to grow your business. And that can be in all different ways. So sales techniques, how to hire the right help so that you have time to go out and Um, get more business in the door, how to live by your calendar so you can make time for everything. So it's an all-encompassing business tool for helping you grow your mortgage business outside of the nuts and bolts and the technical aspect of being a loan officer. Yes. It's growing it and selling, right? How to, how to really bring business in the door. That's really the biggest thing. And if you're uh, a salesman or an entrepreneur or a loan officer, and, and maybe you have never thought of yourself like that, but if you are responsible for your paycheck, if you are by commission, you're an entrepreneur. So pat yourself on the back and kudos to you. You're in business for yourself. Even if you have a branch manager, even if you work for somebody else, you're your own boss. You're responsible for your paycheck. And that brings a lot of joy but it brings responsibility too, because you have to be able to motivate yourself. 
You have to be able to do the things you need to do to go out and get the business in the door. And part of that is knowing who to hire or who to bring on so that you have the freedom to go out and sell knowing that everything is being taken care of back at the ranch. Yeah. And that's the key, isn't it? Is everything is yes. being taken care of back at the office. People are being taken care of. And that that's where hiring the right team and then training them the right way makes such a difference. So how have you done it over the years when, you know, years ago when you started and you got your first employee, whether that was in the mortgage business or in the mortgage marketing animal business, tell us about how you did that and what you've learned from those experiences. Well, I mean, I used to, when I used to hire someone who was like, interview, oh, I like you, come on board. So <laughs> Uh, but that made a lot of mistakes that way. The statistics out there say that of all employees all over planet Earth, about 1%, one of all people out there are superior, what I call a unicorn, you know, have an amazing work ethic. They have the experience that you're looking for. And they have the personality that you look for. And the, all those strings merge together to bring about this amazing human being who gets it, wants it, has the capacity for it, and will do what needs to be done, no matter what it is. About 4% of that population is superior. And so really close to that unicorn status, there may be just something, maybe they're lacking a tiny bit in experience, or maybe they're lacking a tiny bit in how to interact with people, but they're willing to learn. So it's not a huge difference between those two groups, but that's the groups we're looking for. So when you're interviewing people, really, you're looking for that top 5% of that position that you're looking for. And so there's ways to... You're never going to have a 100% guarantee that this person is amazing, but there's ways that you can ensure that you increase your odds. You and I both use a lot of these systems together. I've taught you a few of them, and actually you've taught me a few of them as well. So one of the main things that I use when I'm interviewing these days is one, I do look heavily at their, their resume, but the first thing I look at is their disc profile. So it's a personality profile for your listening uh, audience. I will hand out a URL that will be free to them. So it is disc profile link, disc profile link.com. And that will allow you to disc profile yourself and all your employees. Uh, the assessment itself is in three parts. One is what your values are. These are your motivational drivers. They're why you wake up in the morning. So yeah. what are you driven by? Are you driven by knowledge? Are you driven by following rules and regulations? Are you driven by helping others? There are people that that's their goal is helping others. Are you driven by the need to be a leader? Are you driven by financial? So there's a lot of different, are you driven by the need to be your own person? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different things that you can be driven by. And so that's one of the things that we really look at. The other thing is I like to see how your brain thinks. So there are three ways that your brain thinks. One is you can think about when I'm solving an issue or a problem, how does this affect people? Mm -hmm. How does it affect everyone around me? So my boss, my clients, my family. So you're always filtering and solving issues or problems by how it affects others. Mm -hmm. Another way you could be a problem solver or thinker is you're just a problem solver. Uh, the answer pops into my head and I can immediately make a plan. And I, that's how I process problems is coming up with a, a problem. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and Boom, boom, boom. The third way of thinking is high level. I call that like a 30,000 foot view above the forest. But that is the analytical brain that says, if I do this, how will it affect this? How will it affect that way? Am I doing it correctly? So you may end up at the same answer that other people did, but you won't be happy because it didn't, uh, you didn't do it right. 
It's like math, you know, when we grew up in school, you could have two plus two and one person said four, that was the answer. The other one says four, but they guessed. So they didn't mm -hmm. really know the process for it. And so that's how the analytical thing, thinker is, is, hey, I want to solve the problem, but it's got to be done right too. Yes. And so we've got one, what drives you internally? Two, how does your brain think? And then the third piece of that whole assessment, that disc profile is how do you behave? What does it look like to the outsider looking in? So if you're looking at me and I behave a certain way, that will be your disc profile. So the Ds are like dominant, driven, decisive. Uh, the Is are interactive. They love people. They are the life of the party. They love to chat with people. Our Ss are, I call those my steady eddies. They like security. They like doing it the same way every time and following a path. And then we have our Cs who are compliance driven. They're the, the, the perfectionists, the perfect polys, uh, but they like things done a certain way. And so how, what drives you and how your brain thinks kicks, you mix those up together and, and it kicks out how you behave. And so those are some of the tools I really use a lot. Then I look at their resume after that. So I typically won't even look at a resume until I've seen someone's disc profile because I want to know if they fit into the position that I have. If I have a salesman position, say I'm a, a, a branch manager and I'm trying to hire a loan officer, if I have a salesman's position, there's a certain disc profile that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a higher D. I'm looking for a higher I. I'm looking for someone who's economically driven and I'm looking for someone who wants to be a leader. Mm -hmm. If I'm hiring a processor, however, I don't want that high D. I want right. a high S. And a high C, I want someone who is a steady eddy person and someone who is compliance driven. And then in the values piece of it, I'm not looking for someone who wants to be a leader or an economically driven. I'm looking for someone who follows rules and regulations. So they're a high a re regulatory. So having that disc profile, I won't even kind of look at someone's resume until I've seen their disc profile and see, does this match what I'm looking to hire. Am I looking to hire an assistant or a loan partner? Loan partner, I want them to have a higher eye. They got to be able to interact with people. So those are some big tools that I use. Another tool that you've taught us and brought to the table was the love languages for your business. Yes. And so that will tell me now that I've got my crew together, how do we treat one another? Why does she get her feelings hurt? And she doesn't when I say the exact same thing in the exact same way to them. Yes. It's because their language is different. And so I could tell you all day long, Irene, how amazing and wonderful and talented you are. But if I don't do it in a language that you understand, I know you speak Spanish, but if I told you it in German, I don't speak German, but if I told you it in German, you <laughs> wouldn't know what I was telling you. Even no. though it was amazing, you wouldn't know what I was telling you. And it wouldn't so mean anything. That, exactly. So we have to marry all these things together as we're bringing someone into our family, into our work family, so that we know, one, what their talents are suited for. So are we getting them in the right position in the first place? And then two, how do we communicate with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are so important to do. And after you've done that, then you go to the resume, you see what their experience is. And we have a whole system, don't we, within the Freedom Club to we do. help so people I'll hire. Some hints on the, the resume, some of the big things that I'm looking for is longevity and a job. So especially if I'm looking for like my processors and my loan partners and things like that, I'm looking to see how long they stay in a job. Mm -hmm. So- if someone's a high S, let's take that for example, which is our my steady eddies, I typically see them staying at jobs a little bit longer. They'll stay four or five, seven, 10, 15 years somewhere. So if I see someone's a high S, but now they're a job hopper, that raises a red flag for me because typically those people stay put. So then I'll kind of dig a little bit deeper into their disc profile. What does their aesthetic look like? It's a little green line. Are they a low aesthetic? Typically, those people aren't happy mm -hmm. or or no, I won't say that. Typically, those, those people don't mind chaos. So sometimes I find them stirring the pot or, you know, getting unhappy easily or whatever. So then I'll dig a little bit deeper. But I try and look for what 
what I'm looking for. There's nothing carved in stone. So that's used, may, meant to be a guideline for me, but it's a pretty good guideline. So yes. we're going back to, you guys need help. You will not be able to grow an amazing business all by yourself. You're gonna mm -hmm. need some help. I, I call that my who, not my how. So if you're having to do this stuff, you have you have to know how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So I would rather say, instead, instead of saying, how am I going to get this loan closed? How am I going to calculate that income? How am I going to get it all done in one day? How am I going to juggle this or juggle? How am I going to meet with agents? So instead of asking, how am I going to do something? I like to ask who, who can help me do that so that I can go do this. Who already has those skills that I need so that I can bring them in? So I think the biggest thing is making the decision that you need help. The second decision you've got to make is, is it going to be full-time help? You don't have to have full-time help. Maybe there's someone in your office you can share with if you're just getting started with this and you can't afford that full-time help. Our first time, our very first assistant was four hours a week. That was it. <laughs> four hours for a week. But while she was there... The phones were being pounded, the yes. sales phone calls, the sales were being pounded. So you need to figure out for yourself what is best for your business, what you're missing in your business. And then is there a who out there that can help you? You can even have a who uh, that sells for you. So maybe you're one of those uh, unusual loan officer who is not a high D and a high I. You're really good at your craft. You know how to write and structure a loan like the back of your hand. You know how to connect with uh, your clients really, really well. It's not your cup of tea to go out and drum up business. Mm -hmm. Find someone who does that. So yes. that's another who you could bring on. So I think in our business, we can bring on a lot of different who's for what we're looking for. We just need to be honest with ourselves and not worry about what other people think. Other people are going to say that don't work. Other people are going to say, oh, you got to do that yourself. You have to be the one that does that. No. Yeah, I agree. Other people can do things for you. Yes. And that's the key. That has changed lives as people have learned that in coaching, right? They've learned how to do that and it's changed their life. They've gone from being unhappy, doing things that they don't like to do to being happy and being able to yes. be in their genius, so to speak. So that's yeah, so the big thing that we do. And there's lots of classes on this. Um, so if you'd like to listen to any of them, you know, reach out to, to our team and, and they can help you with be, being able to get access. But, you know, one of my favorite classes is the 80-20. So figuring out what your genius is, what yes. is your gift to the world? What do you love doing? What in, in the mortgage business? You know, that's another story. I had one guy say, like, oh, if I had to pick what I was going to do, I'd be a geologist. I'm like, well, Okay, well, that has nothing to do with looks, but being able to figure out what your gift to the world is, that's what the rock stars do, the uh, actresses and actors who are mega, you know, people, athletes yes. and stuff, they found out what their gift was. They found out what fed their soul. And when they did that, it doesn't even seem like work anymore. Right. And so- in your loan business, you need to get really super honest with yourself and figure out what do I love doing? What would I almost do for free? Mm -hmm. If, because I love doing this so much, it motivates me to get out of bed every morning. Now, this part of the, the business, I'm not real fond of, and that makes me hate the whole business. Typically, I've never found someone who hated the entire business. I it's haven't either. A section of the business that they don't like. And that section of the business, they dislike so much that it overrides or clouds the things that they love. Yes. So the key to that is figuring out what is your gift? What do you love doing? What do you not like doing? And how do we get that off your plate? Yes. So typically that's going to be a who that there's someone out there who is your peanut butter and jelly, who's going to love doing what you don't like doing. And yes. so you bring those on, let them do it. They're going to be happier than a pig and slop. And now you get to be happier than a pig and slop because you get to go out and do what you're best at. Um, and it doesn't matter where we are in the loan business. There's someone out there who can do any part of this. Any part of it is, I, I call it, it's my own made up word, hire outable. So anything. <laughs> 
a loan bar. You know, I had a guy who's ops manager. He was uh, in one state and she was three, two time zones away. So that anything can work, guys. You can anything. make anything work. And with uh, the advent of Zoom meetings and the advent of everything like that and all the technology we have going these days, remote is easier than ever. And the communication is easier than ever. And I always say, if you're going to be hiring a football team like us you want the best super bowl team ever are you going to do that by hiring within your 10 mile radius are you going to be able to find enough talented players in a 10 mile radius 20 mile radius to build a super bowl team mm -hmm. more than likely not right when you see the roster of a super bowl team they're from all over uh, and not just the United States, they're from all over planet Earth. Absolutely. So, yeah. So that's how, that's the mentality you have to have is I'm looking for talent. I'm looking for that unicorn or that superior person. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm willing to look outside of my area to find that person so that I can build the perfect mortgage business. Yes. And there's all kinds of ways to make that happen. As far as financially, there's a lot of people that would say, oh, I we can't afford it. But there's all kinds of ways to make sure that you can adjust your BIPs. You can do a lot of things to make sure you can afford it. And you can't yes. afford not to do it most of the time. And that's what I say. There, uh, I have, um, I, I think I coined this phrase, but I'm not really sure. But I'll take, <laughs> I'll take credit until someone else does. But there's what I call a COI, cost of inaction. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you don't do something, it's costing you. Yes. So, and it's, it's real money guys. It's real money. So if you could be closing, you're closing five loans a month right now and you're doing it by yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And maybe you're making a, a, a good living at that to make a great living or an amazing living. You'd have to be closing 10 to 15 loans a month. You got to have help with that. So every moment that you spend, now that you know what you know, if you live in ignorance, then that's one thing. But once you know the truth, now the cost clock starts ticking. Yes. So you know that to go to the next level, you're going to need help. Mm -hmm. Every moment that you don't find help and you don't start taking things off your place, plate, it's costing you money. Because five years from today, you could be closing your 15 loans a month. Even two years from today, you could be closing your 15 loans a month. So now we've got that gap of I'm closing five. I, I could have, if I had done the right activities, I could have been closing 15 loans a month. So that gap of 10 loans a month, that costs you. So figure out what, how much do I make per loan? That's what it's costing you not to find qualified help. And like you said, Irene, they don't, you don't have to stroke the check. One is, hey, you're paying someone fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year. You're not writing the sixty thousand dollar check up front. Exactly. You're paying them weekly or biweekly. So yep. it's not costing you sixty thousand dollars up front. Number two, like I said, share somebody. Mm -hmm. If there's someone in your office and they need help too, you guys go in it together and share. Yes. And approach your manager. Say, hey, I have an amazing idea. Here's my plan. Yes. And nobody's going to listen to you if you just go to the same. It's like, hey, I heard this podcast. I need help. It's like, yeah. <laughs> That's the okay. truth. Yeah. But if you go to them and say, here's my plan. I plan to make phone calls on Mondays to real estate agents. On Tuesdays to the people I'm already doing business with on Wednesdays to my past database of close clients and to my circle of influence. And on Thursdays to my real estate agents who are getting ready to go out and look at houses over the weekend and making sure that they're not putting anyone who's not qualified in their car. And two, to all the people I've already pre-approved. I'm going to call them every week. So that's my plan for phone calls. I'm also planning on meeting with three agents a day or 
four agents a week, whatever your number is. That's what my plan is. I'm also planning on writing five handwritten notes every single day. So this is my plan. I'm planning on teaching a class a month when mm -hmm. I'm starting you know, video and I'm planning on you know, really working Facebook. So here's my written out plan of what I plan to do to bring business in the door. Mm -hmm. I need some help. Here's what I'd like to ask you. Will you trust me for 90 days to fulfill this plan? And what I'm going to need for you as I'm fulfilling this plan is a little bit of help. I don't need a full timer. I need someone part time. And this is the tasks I need them to do. I need them to answer my phone for me. I need them to take my initial application for me and just get it started for me, fill out all the blanks and everything, ask them for a few details like an application or things like that. And then I'll have the consultation with the client, sell them on it, and then they'll help me collect all the contracts and all of that kind of stuff. But that's the help that I need so that I can devote time to going out and selling. Will you help me with that? Mm -hmm. If you come to someone with a plan, and you come to them and giving them a time frame that you're going to execute this plan in 90 days. And they still tell you, no, there's an issue or problem. They yes. don't trust you. So, mm -hmm. so what have you done to break the circle of trust in mm -hmm. there? And so some of this could be on you. Hey, I know I haven't performed well in the past, but I'm dedicated now. I have a group that's holding me accountable or I have someone holding me accountable. And this is my uh, pledge to you and give me the 90 days. And if I don't perform, you can take this person away and I'll never ask again. So mm -hmm. I think there's ways that we can get the help that we need sharing, decreasing our BIP plan. You, you could do that too. Hey, if I take away BIPs, when I get to this level, can I get them back? You could do mm -hmm. that. Too. So there's yes. a lot of ways to do this guys, but the key is you're not going to grow your business unless you've got the help you need. That's right. That's it. In a nutshell, you will not grow as much. You'll be limited to what yes. you can do unless you get the help that you need. So I appreciate you sharing all of that because it's so important who we hire, how we hire them and, and just how we get them on our team. And you've been really, really good at that. You had a rock star team and have one in your mortgage business with Carl. And you also have an amazing team on the mortgage marketing animal side. You have really good people there. And then now it's just a matter of training them, right? That's the next step is training them. Yeah. And Annette, so where you come in, my love. So if you guys don't know it already, Irene has formed some amazing, amazing classes to help train your team. Um, it's called Loan Team Training. And it that is what it's designed for, is to help train your team. My recommendation, okay, this is my recommendation. If you're hiring your first hire, do not hire a newbie. Yeah. It will slow you down. I, I compare that to, hey, I want to travel from Florida to where you are in Arizona. There's a lot of ways to get there. Yes. I could start walking. That would take me several months to walk. Mm -hmm. I could jog. That'll uh, th that would never Still take happen. several months, <laughs> but it would take a while. I could hop on my bike. Now I might be able to shave some time off because I can go faster on my bike. I could shave some time. Maybe it would take me a month. I don't know how long it would take on a bicycle. I could hop on my car. That might take me three or four days to get there. I can hop on an airplane and get there even faster. So hiring experienced help is taking an airplane. Yeah. Hiring a newbie is walking. You're going to get there. It's just how long it takes you to get exactly. there. And then we circle back to that cost of inaction. Mm -hmm. So for that time that you spend walking and training a new team, you're not bringing in more business. And so it's costing you something. So mm -hmm. hire experienced for your first help. But even when you hire experienced, they may need to know how, what to say, how to mm -hmm. support you the scripts that they need to edify you, to edify the real estate agent that you're working. How do they ask for more business on yes. your hand? All of those things you train the people how to do. I do believe you do have a newbie class now. Um, yes, we do. But, but, but your team trains in three different ways. So one is wow, how to give someone a wow experience. And that's what I was just talking about. Training your team on the scripts, 
how to edify everybody, how to ask for a business. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, those people, when you look at their disc profiles, aren't going to say, Ooh, look at me, I'm a salesman. So that may be some of the pushback you get. I'm not in sales or I would have taken a sales job. I took a fulfillment job. Okay. There are ways that even if you're not a salesman, there's a way you can ask for more business. Yes. And so that's one of your classes. I know another one of your classes is, Hey, I've decided that my highest misuse is to do nothing but bring the business in. That's all I want to do. But I need someone to sell the deal to the client. You've mm -hmm. got a client, you've got a client conversion class that teaches the loan partners how to sell, how yes. to ask for business, how to get the client to say, yeah, yes. I want to do business with you. And then the third class that you offer is the one that is for newbies. Again, yes. this is if you've already got a stellar team, you've got one or two loan partners, you've got one or two partner uh, processors, you've got your assistants. In, so you've got a good team in, in place. Now you feel uh, it necessary to bring in some inexperienced help. You want to train that newbie from scratch. It's perfectly OK to do it then. But it, I would not have that be my first person out of the gate that I hire to hire right. a newbie. But mm -hmm. All three of your classes are amazing for helping your team get the training that they need in whatever capacity they need it. Well, thank you, Tammy. I appreciate your vote of confidence. It's they, It's been so fun to create and to have the classes. So the first two classes, WOW and Client Conversion Training, those are live classes. The trainers are on video and audio with the people who come to the class. The third class, the boot camp, is a online self-paced course that talks about mortgages. And that's a good one, even for people that got hired in the business maybe a year ago or something, and they never got formally trained. That would be a good one for them too. So thank you so much for being here today. You have been just amazing. Thank you for at having me. You've been so, you are so amazing at hiring and you're amazing at everything you do, but hiring is one of the things you're known for, right? And you gave us a great rundown today. Any loan officer that listened to this should have some really good steps now about how to hire and who to hire and how to do it. And I'm just so grateful for you. I'm grateful for all of the example that you are to so many people in the mortgage business. And I know that Carl is the face, you know, he is the one on all the pictures. He's the one that puts his name out there and everything associated. And you have always been the one more, a little bit more behind the scenes, but you're still the one that does a lot of the stuff. You Wizard are Bob peanut, behind the curtains. <laughs> exactly. You are peanut butter and jelly for sure. And you are definitely. I have learned so much from both of you, have had a front row seat to success just by watching the two of you over the years. And now Steve has joined you and it's just amazing. So thank you so much for everything I've learned from you, but also for being my friend, for caring, for understanding the language of appreciation in the workplace the way you do. For me, it's time and, and words of affirmation. And you're so good with understanding people and knowing what their language is. And uh, I'm so grateful for you. So thank you for being here. Thanks. And guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, please reach out. We're both available to, to help you in your journey. So we appreciate you. We appreciate your listening. And now go out, find your unicorn, and then get crack a lacking on what your <laughs> gift to the world is. You'll be yes. so much happier. So Absolutely. thanks for being here. Looking forward to hearing your amazing success stories. Yes. And we'll put some notes down in the show notes about how to get in touch with us and everything. But thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate you listening to this podcast. And if you got value out of it, I hope that you'll leave us a review that will really help to get people to see the podcast. And, and if you along to your friends. Yes. And pass it along to your friends. Let your friends know about it. That would really mean a lot to me if you would do that. And so the other thing is just that you can go to LoanTeamTraining.com and get whatever information you need about training and you can reach out to us as well. So thanks again for being here and have a wonderful week.